they won't clear the area, then we don't work. Yeah. This no has choice. nothing to do with you guys, but this has to do with the government listening to the people of British Columbia. There's huge safety issues here. There's huge economic issues here. And, there's, and the people of British Columbia want to be included in decisions that are made around parks. You're spending $2 million here and you can't afford biologists. You're firing biologists and you're spending $2 million for Winnebago. You're talking to the wrong person. I'm not a, I'm not a politician. <laughs> you're a parks person. I'm not a and politician. this is a park, is it not? I'm really disappointed in parks. I mean, this isn't the way to be treating the local community. And if they don't have something that they're proud of here, let's sit down with the local community and see if we can work this out. There's all kinds of alternatives to what's happening here. We are planning to put a parking lot in, which is a $2 million project, purely for safety reasons. Um, it's a very dangerous area uh, with the traffic going through and the number of tourists. And we want to have that parking lot open by next, next summer when the tourist season starts. Well, the debates about creating this parking lot down here in these newly acquired lands where previously the public was able to park up here, this particular parking lot and the trail that will have to go to the big trees is ill-situated because it's located right in the middle of an elk winter habitat range. How is it that your ministry approved a parking lot in the Cameron River riparian zone that is critical elk winter range that is also of a species that's a conservation concern in southern Vancouver Island? Well, my, my understanding of it is, is that uh, this has been a, a public safety issue for at least the last nine or ten years that uh, fell back with the previous government and came with this government that there's a certain public concern about what's happening in the area with the parking and uh, my understanding also is that uh, the uh, grazing for the elk uh, isn't going to be affected and that uh, we're moving on with uh, making sure that we balance the two. And the Western Canada Wilderness Committee is concerned over the elk and their habitat. How do you feel about that? I'm sure the elk will be fine. I looked at some of the studies that uh, Parks had done and there was absolutely no mention of elk use in this area. This area here is, is um, an area they use as winter range and winter range is, is critical to animals because if they don't survive the winter, the rest of the year doesn't really matter. And right here we have Casito Grove, it's a tiny little, little spot, old growth forest. The rest of this area is all under private force company control. And the other area I was talking about earlier is um, the Cameron Valley Fire Break is what it's called. So there's a little piece of old growth right there and the elk winter in that area. So they have this and this area here. That's all out of the, the whole Cameron Valley. But you have consulted with the uh, Western Canada Wilderness Committee and groups like there that? There's been lots of consultation over the last two years. And we had a meeting on, on October the 4th. And the Western Wilderness uh, representative was there. Um, the majority of people there said, get on with it. We need that parking lot. And we're very supportive of this going ahead. The people at that meeting were not represented with a full community of interest. There were not sufficient environmental interests there. And that particular meeting didn't go into depth. It was just basically a rubber stamp of people that she had picked for that meeting. On a separate issue, Ms. Trumper has on numerous occasions talked about all the, all the groups that support her plan. Following this, I contacted her office, her constituency office, and they were providing me with a list of the groups that she says supports her plan. We called those lists, those, those names on that list, and we talked to the managers of those particular local governments. Really, there's five out of nine don't support her plan that she told the minister and the government supported the plan. They're going to have to take out a whole bunch of old growth. They're going to imperil the elk habitat. We're on a floodplain here. The parking lot will flood and maybe most important, the high pressure winds that come up the inlet to Port Alberni roar up that pass, which has already been clear cut. In 1997, on New Year's Eve, it took out a quarter of the old grove. Anybody that lived here then remembers that. It was like a, a nuclear war going on in there. You cut more trees in the uh, area between Port and the main grove than you are going to open it up to more of the high pressure winds. I'm saying we're not going to have a grove here in 10 or 20 years if we keep cutting upwind. You uh, think that uh, maybe they should move these parking lots? I think they should expand them because these, these trees are a treasure to the province and to all the tourists that see it yeah. around the world. So why should they expand the parking lot? To get more people in here because it's, it's very tight. You have a highway, a major highway right beside the parking. It can be dangerous actually to cross. So it should be done. It should be done.
Well, the safety issue is major, and yes, they should do something about the parking, but this is not the place for it. We're a long way from the main grove. We're on the, the parking lot should be on the other side of the street. Western uh, Canada Wilderness Committee has a very good proposal, $1.8 million to cut a hole upwind of the grove here is just plain stupid. An alternative was put forward that was in a, in a, on an adjacent clear cut that was on higher ground. It wasn't in the riparian zone and was part of the proposed extension to the park. Why didn't you consider that proposal? Uh, well, in fairness, I think that there's been a lot of considerations that have been done over the last nine or ten years by uh, uh, different ministers, and I can't even imagine how many ministers would have uh, had a look at this, and I think that ultimately, in the end, the decision was made that uh, based on public safety, based on the uh, the environmental impact that it's having on the area, that this was the best choice of all. The government, you know, has got their biologists to comment on this, and, and it really bothers me because they have cut their staff so much, these biologists can't go out in the field and do the proper assessments, yet they're expected to comment on it and they're being pressured to prove this. And, and they say that there's only a few bulls that winter in here and it's not a big deal, you know. Yet, you know, I have the evidence to prove it. I have footage of cows and calves. Um, there's no doubt that they're in here, but they don't have the knowledge of it because they haven't allowed their staff to go do the proper inventories. Scientists working in the area, independent scientists, have said that there isn't even enough staff to get out into the field to monitor elk habitat. So what's your response to that? Well, I think that when there's a specific issue that uh, takes place, whether it's uh, in that particular issue of uh, a Cathedral Grove Park, that uh, we do make sure that uh, staff do apply it and it becomes a priority thing that uh, staff look at and uh, that's the indication that I've got that has been done. Isn't there a problem with the elk population around there anyway? Is this a concern? No, I don't think there's a population. There's a very healthy population of, of elk. But the, the whole issue of this is putting people first and I certainly don't want to be the, per the one person who gets called if we don't have a parking lot and someone phones and says we've had a major accident which is waiting to happen and what are you going to do about it? I think the environmentalists believe that, that elk and humans can both exist on the planet, that we don't have to eliminate one or the other, and that it's basically just a way of calling us preservationists and trying to create some sort of marginality where we're basically the subject of hatred and the subject of being ridiculed. This isn't a personal battle, this is about a cathedral. Okay, they're talking cathedrals all over the world don't charge money to be to, to go to. This isn't a way of making a few bucks for the government to try and pay off their debt. They're going to kill the tourism industry if they keep this up. Mm -hmm. And we need to do something about it. And they need to listen to the people of British Columbia and the local people. If they would come out to a public meeting, they would see the degree of opposition there is to what they're doing here. Yeah.